So David, you made this great video about rebuilding the automatic transmission. We get tons of comments that people want to know a little bit about more what's going on. So I thought you and I would take a minute. We'll just go through it. Maybe you can answer some questions for the idiot in the room. That's me. <laughs> so ready? Sure. Let's, let's do roll. it. Okay. Now this is a what? 1962 Thunderbird? Correct. You're pushing it because the transmission is dead. It is completely dead. And what is this? The power glide? No, this is a three speed uh, cruise -o -matic Ford. Ah, and that's your shop. Correct. So now we got the underside. Which is very ugly as you see. Oh man, he's leaking oil everywhere. Yeah. Okay, so that's a transmission lift. That's a kind of a must have for work like this. Uh, yes, it saves yourself from uh, laying on your back. I personally, I, I don't know how anybody can live without a hoist in general. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, once you have it way up in the air like that, you have to have that, that two-stage transmission jack. Right. It makes life a whole lot easier. So what was it doing? You, you'd press on the gas and it wouldn't go forward? You had to pretty much over-rev it to get it to creep. Okay. Um, and then earlier when we were draining the fluid out of the, out of the torque converter, yep. you noticed it wasn't red. Ah, so that's a big problem. brown. So now you got it out and now you're starting to take it apart. Correct. And so this is the yep. prop shaft you're taking off. Yep. That's the prop shaft, the back end of it. Okay. When do you, when do you start seeing the evidence that something's wrong? Anything here? Well, already with, again, back to the fluid color. Yep. That fluid, that is not engine oil. That's transmission fluid. And what color is it supposed to be? Bright red. And this is ATF, automatic transmission fluid, right? Yes. And so this is yep. brown. Right. So this suggests that there's some friction going on in there? Uh, there's friction going on in there, and ultimately we found out it has some engine oil in it. Oh. And some coolant, because it had a radiator issue with the trans The transcooler goes through into the radiator like every production car has, and when that cooler started leaking, it started pulling in some of that coolant. Yeah, so at some point the two fluids mixed, Yep. and now we have Correct. coolant in the transmission. Yep. Is yep. this bad? That's really bad. <laughs> okay. It's really bad. All right. Yeah. You're working fat. Oh, what is this? Oh my God. So that looks <laughs> like it had some sort of movement. What are we looking it, at there? It looks like it sat in a swamp is what it looks like. Now, is that normal? <clears throat> no. So not even for an old all. transmission? Not even for an old transmission. That is a combination of the, the, the fluid being, like I said, just whooped from, from coolant being added into it. Yep. And that is clutch, ultimately is clutch dust. Um, How long do you think that this thing's ever been changed? Um, never? Right around never. <laughs> yes. So this car wasn't particularly well cared for. It seems that way. It seems that way. So this is your first indication you got some big problems to go. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, now you're just still disassembling it. Lots of pieces. You can see that there's four main components in here. So you have you have your top piece that's your valve body, you have a servo, another servo, and then you have your pressure control valve. Okay, so, so this... Th they're all module pieces. Yeah, so what we're looking at, this is a, the little control room of the transmission. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The valve body is the brain of all of it. Right, and there's no computers on this thing. No, man. It's all mechanical. No, sir. All right, now you got it. We're looking at this drum inside, right? Yep. Or drums. Whoops, let's yeah, see. Yeah, you got a pair there. of drums on this one. So... What are these things? What are these different one, two, three? What are is it? Well, there's there's two drums. You have you have what they literally call the front drum and the rear drum, but it's your high speed um, and reverse. And then you have your in the combination of all these. There's there's four ways to apply pressure basically. <laughs> so is this? We're looking at this outer drum. This is the front front gear set, correct? That's actually part of the planetary. Right. So how many planetaries are in this thing? Just one. Just one. Yep, one and those are fascinating devices. Yes, you, they gears are. spinning, you know, you got sun gears going around the center, and then you got the ring gear on the outside. This yep. looks like the ring gear, correct? Yep. yep. So there'd be gears on the inside of that. Correct. And then this this outside edge right here. Yep. That's the uh, that's the parking called the parking pole. Oh, those notches. Yeah. That's where it engages. Yep, that's what engages. Got it. Still the imp is this the input shaft? Uh no. That's this the output. Output. Shaft. So this yep. goes back to the differential. <clears throat> correct. Okay. And now you've disassembled it. Looks like there's all these little rings in there for, what are these, ceiling rings and different um, brackets? On this side, you have, uh, the ceiling rings are actually all up through this intermediate shaft. Mm -hmm. There are a couple in here because you have the, the governor that's on there. What does that do? Um, that basically helps control that shift point. Mm. Um, and then there's also the uh, speedometer gear yep. and, and such. And then over to the left, this is where one of the 
what do you call it? A gear set? A drum? What is? Well, what? that's the planetary. You can just see the those gears that you were talking about earlier yep. in the planetary set. Yeah. So why did you have to take all this apart? Was this just to clean and inspect? Well, we had to. Yes, we had to go through and clean out all that garbage out of it. Yeah. And then, because everything needs to be able to move, you know, well. Right. And then inspect for any any kind of broken teeth on any of the gears. And then uh, within all the clutch packs as, as we get to those. Right. Okay. So now we got the planetary we're looking at. You right. can see the gears. It kind of looks like a differential mm -hmm. you know, a lot of ways. And yep. then this outer surface is a part of the drum. Surface, yep. part of the drum. And I imagine there needs some special tools to take all the little circlips and get all this it's um, packed yeah. together pretty tightly. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see how special they are. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now we got the first, what are, what are we looking at here? Looking at the first, that's the, the rear uh, drum set or the rear friction discs. Got it. Now this is what what they call a clutch pack. Correct. So in addition to that band around the drum, you mm -hmm. have clutches. By like how many? Are, how many are there? In that clutch pack, I think there was eight and one and six in the other. And when they when I say that, meaning there's frictions and steels. So there'd be six steels and in six frictions. Let's say. Yeah. So each plate, one's a friction plate, one's a steel plate, and they're keyed. Yep. You can see that the the um, some have the, the gearing on the inside of the disc, some have it on the outside, because they, they connect to different shafts, correct? correct. Yep. Do you right. know which clutch this is? That's the, that's the, rear, um, the rear clutch, so that is just reverse. Oh, okay. In that one. So how many clutches are in this thing? There's two sets. Two sets, yep. okay. So you're taking all these apart. I'd be so nervous I was going to mix these things up. <laughs> but these friction plates, that's where all that goo came from. Yeah. It's kind of like sandpaper, and yep. you got grit off it, yep. right? Yep, and what you can see is, the steels should be steel, and then they have frictions with the with the inner. Yep. You can see here where they're st where they're falling apart. Oh yeah. And then even up here on this one, see there's a shiny spot where it's completely gone. Now that layer is not all that thick. The friction I mean, layer. Yeah, the friction layers might be, I don't know, maybe forty, fifty thousandths thick. It's and it's on both sides. Yep. But given how transmission fluid works for the for the lubrication, yep. They should they should last say 100,000 miles without, without issue. How do you get your hands clean? I don't. <laughs> you just leave it. Okay, so now you're peeling to get all these pieces. Here we're at yep. like tons and tons of little O-rings and sealers mm -hmm. and circlips. Everyone's tied to different pieces. Oh, that's great. We can really see what's going on here. So this is one of the clutches. Now you're mm -hmm. taking apart the second one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's oh, the front drum. Now you can see those friction plates pretty well. And so these are replaceable items. You know they're toast. Yes, they're wear items. Yeah. Yep. They're, they're considered the soft parts in the, in the transmission. So when you, when you rebuild the transmission, this is what you're replacing? Yes. And you, yep. there's no way to do it except to disassemble the whole thing. That's correct. The bands you typically don't replace. There's one of them fancy tools. Ah. So, so a like piece a, of threaded rod, a flat plate, and a, another flat plate bent to a U. Kind of like some puller. Oh, yeah. I see. So you're pulling the bearings out of that. Is that what that is? Actually, you're compressing down so you can get that. See that big spring oh, has, yeah. has got a little retaining clip in there. And you have to compress the spring to get the retaining clip loose and then control it coming out. So did you know how these things work before the first one you took apart? Um, no. No. No, my first experience was, was basically pulling apart a power glide um, to figure out what made it tick and, and laid it out on, stretched it out on the table. And that's how you taught yourself? Correct. Yeah, they're fascinating devices. And so these are all like little little control arms and bell cranks and things that operate things within the gearbox. Correct? That's that's all the shifter mechanism right there. Yeah. Okay. Which isn't really isn't a whole lot. It's the shifter and the it's the shift between gears and then park is really all that's doing. Got it. And then there's a throttle uh, throttle portion to that that you're kicked down. Right. And that section of uh, cast iron is a little um, heavy. Oh, I bet it is. So that's a cast that's, iron it's case. It's 40, 40, 50 pounds. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, like you do in any job, you got to clean off all the old gunk. Yep. So now we're in the parts washer. Correct. Clean and clean and clean and clean and clean and clean and clean. How long did you spend with the parts washer? A uh, couple hours. Yeah, a couple, couple hours. A couple hours cleaning because you actually clean everything twice. You clean it. You clean it once in the parts washer to get the main major stuff out of there. Yeah. And then clean everything, squirt everything down with uh, brake clean or, or carburetor cleaner. You got to clean your house too. Uh, no, I no. don't clean the house. <laughs> Lucky you. With those hands. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm surprised you're allowed in the house. All right, now you're laying out all the parts. So it's interesting, the planetary gear set right here on the right, mm -hmm. that is uh, a, kind of a lifetime part. Right? Yes. Those gears are always meshed. 
Yep. They should spin fine unless yep. like a, a rock or something by some chance gets in there and chips teeth. Otherwise, they're fine. Correct. All right. So, so this is this is the valve body here. Um, at the end of the day, we counted oh seventy-five my. parts in this. Look in at this that! Piece. It's like a circuit board. Mm -hmm. And those are all little passages for the fluid that travels around to different places to control which gear you're in. Correct. Wow. Yep. Holy cow. That's and there's no electronic servos, no nothing along that lines. It's all pressure. That's amazing. So that's uh, sort of machined in there. I mean, no wonder mm -hmm. these things are kind of, exp they were an expensive option back in the right. day. Because look how complicated it is. And can you imagine drawing these things up on paper? Right. It was all done on paper. No yeah. computers. No. No three-dimensional modeling at all. It would just... Oh my gosh. So this is this is this is this is like clockwork in a way, isn't it? Yes. Really and, precise. And all parts. that stuff is stuck. Oh, it's all stuck together. Mm -hmm. mm. So you think this transmission's ever been apart? Uh, no. Oh, well, look at that! You got a little pick in there. So this is like dental work. That's actually yes. That is a a dentist tool. So you're making sure the gunk's out. Actually, I'm trying to get stuff pried out of there, and yeah, and cleaning some of the gunk as well. Holy cow! So, did you have a manual or something like that with a drawing, so you knew how it went back together? Um, I do, but it's pretty fuzzy. Oh, really? The detail's not all that great. So again, the controls, the valve body, cleaning, 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 and I see how you do that. That's a good idea. Put that towel out, lay everything out, yeah. so you know what you got, and you're not going to lose anything. Yeah, and that's and that's the idea behind the towel. I know there's some questions of you know, oh, aren't you getting lint and all that stuff in there? Yeah, I guess you probably do, but at the same token, you're not wiping it back down with that. Right. Um, I'm using the towel so all those parts don't roll off the steel. Yeah. Because um, trying to find those pieces on my floor would be insane. Yeah. Well, you just use an old towel. Doesn't yeah. have a lot of lint, right? So nope, exactly. Not? Oh, nice and clean now. Okay. Now this has got to be the scary point. Are you putting the pieces back <sighs> correctly? Yeah. Look at all those springs and those little ball check mm -hmm. valves. Holy smokes. Yep. Yeah, so there was a lot. There was probably, I would estimate, about two hours in getting this piece back together just to verify that we had the right order of everything. Because as we're doing it, you know, this is probably, there was a, like a one or two week lag in between here. So it wasn't like the very next day. Yeah, so this is the valve body. This is what routes the, the fluid to where it needs to go. Correct. Yeah. Yep. There we go. One part done. Yep. <laughs> the smallest. Maybe the hardest. Okay, here's the pressure regulator. Yes. Wow, look at those. Okay, so those plungers go up and down to regulate the pressure of the fluid within the gearbox, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. It, it routes it through the torque converter, it routes it into the valve body and then into the... And so the red fluid is just uh, ATF you use yep. to assemble it? Yep. Mm, got it. And I wish we could smell that, AT well, I'm glad we can't smell that ATF because that is the most heinous smelling stuff. Wait, the fresh stuff? The fresh stuff is horrible. That particular Ford stuff, it smells like a cat peed in it. No kidding. Yes, it's, it's horrible. Oh, that's nasty. Yes. So wait, you have to use specific Ford. And the whole garage smells like that. Still? <laughs> Still. <laughs> so you have to use that specific Ford automatic transmission fluid for right. this. Yep. So you can't just use any ATF. It has to no, be for uh, the Ford. No. And that's because what's in the fluid happens to match with those friction characteristics of the plates. Exactly right. Right. Yep. This is the front pump here. Okay, so that's what that gear does. It's mm -hmm. driven off the engine, and it pumps the fluid to create the pressure. Any idea what the pressure is inside that thing? Um, they can put out in the excess of about 300 PSI. Holy cow. Yeah. Um, that's when they're deadheaded. They operate. They should operate around 150 to 180. So you're squeezing out bearings and seals, yep. stuff like that, to put in new ones, make sure they're fresh. I saw somebody back there. Who was that? <laughs> Again, no manual. So you're doing this by memory? Just how it goes together? Uh, some pieces of this, yes. But like the pump. That's brave. Or crazy. Or crazy. <laughs> See, there was another, where we pressed that in, there was another ring we had to press down to get it pried out, pried out of there. Oh, wow. Well, I'm glad to see you're wearing glasses. Smart move with all that. Absolutely. Wash, wash, clean, clean. So is that the majority of this job was clean, inspect, and replace the worn parts, essentially, right? Yep, yep. And that was something that was... Uh, what so there is a captured, what is there's that? a needle bearing without a cage. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. So the needle bearings are all those little sticks yep. that go around the circumference of that hole. Mm -hmm. And they spin like logs around the exactly shaft, right. correct? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So there's nothing to hold those in there? No. So what do you use, grease? 
Yep, I used some grease grease to put them in. There's some there's some transmission uh, goo that oh. Uh, oh, that yes. quickly dissolves. You know, just like assembly lube in an engine, but it's an assembly lube for transmission. And you use that to put it in there. But it's um, yeah, and they're not very uh, you know diameter wise. They're they're only needle blaring. They're real thin. Yeah, you might need so, an adult beverage after somewhere yeah. like that. <laughs> Multiple. <laughs> Crazy! Oh my gosh! What little detail! And some work. of those uh, from um, usage were were had to be replaced. They were broke. So did you count them? Because what if you're too short? Uh, yeah, no. Might be a problem. Made later. sure it was <laughs> made sure it was stuffed tight though. <laughs> okay. Now we were looking at the pump still again. Yeah. Yeah. Putting that well, back. that's the that's one of the apply servos. That's the front. What does apply that do? Servo. That applies one of the bands, the front band. Okay. Um, and there's an adjustment on that as well. So now we're looking at the clutch pack. This is called the clutch cage, correct? Uh, yeah. And you're or the drum. Drum, clutch drum. Yep. Now you do uh, you alternate the plates. Friction steel, friction steel, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Put that in there. Oh, right. So that's the little carrier. Yeah. That's actually the reverse. That's the rear. Oh. Oh. Oh, right. So you wanted to soak it with transmission yep, fluid. You, yep. You pre-soak the, pre-soak all the friction so they're not dry. Right. So the steel is is keyed to the drum, right? And the other ones are the friction ones are keyed to whatever shaft is in there. Yeah, correct? yeah. yeah. The center, center piece. Wow, fussy work! Look at that. And here, I'm, what I'm doing is setting the. There's a, a clearance. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And the clearance is just the gap between the plates. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want them tight because then they'd be applied all the time. Right. And you want them too loose because it won't have enough travel to apply. Did you get that out of a book or did you just know that in your head? Uh, actually, it came with the it came with the friction kit. Ah. It gave had some directions. Thank God. And I actually read them first. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this time. Smart. You're a smart man. Okay, there's the, there's the, the, the first drum assembled. Mm -hmm. And on the outside, this is where that band holds the outside right. stationary. More, what are these things, little O-rings on there? So you have uh, steel rings that are on that shaft. So they're a ceiling ring because an O-ring wouldn't hold up on that in that scenario. Because pressure yeah. yeah. So they're basically like a piston ring Got it. At, at that point. Wow, um, name, and they're a fussy little bugger too because they, they have like an interlocking uh, end to them. Um, oh, so you're putting them on with dental picks. You've got to stretch them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just enough though because they're cast so they'll... You want to crack them? If you go too far, yeah, crack them or... Oof. Wow. Okay, now is this the point where you're going, I'm in the home stretch? Uh, yeah, this is the point where it's like, man, this should go together real simple and fall together three hours later after, we've, after I figured out a couple miscalculations. Oh, yeah? <laughs> so we have yeah, yes, that feeling like the home stretch. The planetary, this is the actual gears. Yep. And then we have one of the clutch packs with the bands next to mm -hmm. it. Now you're going to put the output shaft on it. Yeah, that's there you go. It has a high speed, uh, a high speed clutch, a reverse clutch, and then it has two forward bands. Got it. And how they use those in conjunction gets your different speeds, because this transmission has a, to me, a kind of an odd thing. You can, you can put it. In, it has two drives. Hmm. It has a drive where you leave in first gear like normal, and it shifts up to third, and then it has a drive where you start in second. Oh wow. Which snowy roads would be fantastic. They're advanced. Yeah. So this is another clutch. Yeah. Yeah, because what's fascinating about planetary is the gear ratio depends on what you stop, which element you stop, either the outer right. part, the inner part, That's or, exactly the, right. yes. or the gears that go around it. Right. Oh. Oh yeah. And, and getting that. those to go in is well, you set you set the clearance first, and then I, I went back in and put that. Set the clearance of the clutch plaques. Exactly. Right. Yep. Yep. And now you're assembling. Yeah. That inner gear. And back to the fluid, you you soak them overnight so they have plenty of time to... Because they expand, right? Yeah. They get yeah, a little plenty fatter. Of, plenty of time. To... Yeah. So that'd be a big mistake to put them in dry. Yes. Your clearance would not be right. Clearance wouldn't be right, and it wouldn't last probably more than 10 feet. It's a good thing you knew that. Yes. Now you're in the home stretch. Oh, look at that. That's yep. a good... Oh, well, no. Do it again. There. Oh, one more time. <laughs> <laughs> getting this yeah, together. There we go. Oh, getting no. that to fit right is it tough. Okay, yep, no, we're good. Get it all in there. Getting the bands on. That's they, they hold the outer cage of the clutches yep. and stop them, yeah. 
So the bands are lifetime parts. You don't have to replace the band. Yeah, bands bands are pretty forgiving. They they don't. I mean, we put new bands in it. Yeah. But the but the old bands were not that not that bad. It's fascinating because metal on metal. No, that's that has a friction as well on the band. Yeah. Oh, it does. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. So these little lines take the fluid and then distribute it. It's part of the yeah. And it goes back up into that shit. Well, it comes out of that that rear pump. Yep. So you have this rear pump in here, and that's it's part of the circular system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then that's that last little piece there is your speedometer gear. Right. That little bevel. Yep. What do you call it? The prop shaft right now, or input shaft? Oh, uh, tail shaft. Tail shaft. That goes out the back. Okay. Yep. And so wisely, you're torquing everything to spec so it stays together and yep. you don't overstress the bolts. Yep. Yep. Even though you're going in the cast iron, you could probably torque that thing to, you know, 90 or 100 foot pounds of torque. Well, at this stage, imagine you broke the bolt. Oh, God. Oh, you have to yeah. drill that thing out. Yeah. Can I know all the nice shiny new parts, all the controls on it? In red fluid. Red fluid. It stinks, but it's still red, at least. It's almost like it's pre burnt. You're right. Is it's what it is. It's got the nasty smell in oh, it. Oh, God, yeah. Gosh, look at all those pieces. It is like a Swiss clock. Oh, my gosh. Well, all the... Um, this is the first one I've had a part that has all these uh, tubes going every direction. Right. It's kind of interesting. It's like the circular system of the fluid. Uh, yeah, yes. Okay, so you got What would you put on there on the gasket? Just RTV or what is um, it? Some clear silicone Oh. is what I used. Done. Get the oil pan on. Here we go. Oh, you're so almost done. There we go. Oh, bell housing. Oh, Which yeah. the bell housing, I had to re-weld. You can see some scar tissue on there. Right, it had a big hole in it, didn't it? Yeah, it had a hole in it. It had multiple cracks. But where the cracks were at um, was not an issue as far as structure. And but that's it, cast iron too? No, that's aluminum. Aluminum? Yeah, so you can see it right up here. Interesting. Look at those and scars. scars. Um, it looks like the maybe a, a bolt came out of it at some point in time or a starter or something broke buzzed around and buzzed around and just because the f the flex plate was pretty pretty chewed up oh paint oh nice you get all the details I had to all right let's see where that torque converter okay so there's the transmission now here we got the torque converter which just looks like a big kind of drum yep. so what's interesting about these especially the early ones that weren't lockup torque converters you know, the engine is not directly connected to the transmission, right? No, it can't be. Right. Because it's stall. It would, yeah, you need the engine to be able to mm -hmm. spin freely when the car is stopped. So a torque converter, there's always naturally some slip between the transmission and the engine. Correct. And the torque converter take, allows that. Mm -hmm. So this car might need some other work. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it needs a couple things. Getting close. Hooking up the shifter. So, <laughs> so I, I like that technique. So Sometimes gotta, you got to do what you got to so, do, right? Right, so the gas pedal is actually hooked up to the transmission, so when you press it all the way down, the transmission knows to go down a gear, the kick-down switch, right? That's correct, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, totally in the clear. Get the drive shaft on, the exhaust, all the little piddly bits. Oh, nice, you welded some new couplers on the exhaust. Good. Yeah, the exhaust, the exhaust that was on it right there had a really nasty-looking joint. Yep. Um, so I took the opportunity to cut it there to make things easier and... Uh, exhaust works no fun. Up. No. We're almost getting ready to drive this thing. So you've been welding for a long time? <laughs> In that case? Look at that. It drove. Oh, my gosh. There you go. Nice work. How did that feel? Was that a pretty exciting time? It was great. Started Fired up and rolled right out. Bounced in the reverse, no problem. And... Well, fantastic job. Thanks for giving us the lowdown. You're welcome. Thank you.